Welcome everyone, Kyle here, back again on the channel with a special video today. A video exactly one year in the making, as this is my updated collector's tour for 2021. The time has finally come to unleash this one. As you guys know, I've been doing a lot of work over the last year, redoing a lot of displays. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. I know I get messages every day, people looking for this video. So uh, here it is. It's always a work in progress. I always say this is a snapshot in time and that's exactly what it is and exactly what you're gonna see so I hope you enjoy I'm gonna welcome you all into my house it's like we're doing a little guided tour together and we'll have an, uh, more videos down the line uh, for the sake of time you couldn't go through every single figure you guys would be here all day and I know attention spans uh, you don't want to sit here for 10 hours but what I'll probably do in 2021 is maybe jazz class superstars room we'll have a single video of that maybe later down the line where we go uh, figure by figure. Maybe we'll do something like that down the line, like I said. So hope you guys enjoy this. I will also say, let's call this video A. Video B will be released in a couple of days, but I know there's going to be a lot of questions out of this video. It always happens. Uh, I will explain, you know, what risers I use, what stands I use, how I keep things clean, what display cases I use, what bookshelves I use. I'll answer a lot of uh, collector's questions that come out of uh, these videos. And I'll do a separate video of that kind of to go along with this video just to answer a lot of questions. But feel free to leave me any question in the comment. Uh, feel free to share the video with anybody you think want to see it. Let's see if we can beat last year's video. I don't know if that's possible, but hey, you never know. So there it is. So I welcome all you guys to check out my collection. And uh, thanks for watching. And here it is. All right, everybody, it's time for the start of the tour, and we start in my house with the office, uh, my home office. Last year's video, my office is totally different from then. Uh, and last year, I didn't work from home, as COVID has brought me at home, working from home every day. So I had a lot of time to stare and look at stuff and think about what I wanted to change in my office. And I did a ton of changes in 2020, and you're gonna see them all right now. So follow me through the French doors, right in here. And we will start to the side here with NECA Gremlins. I uh, love Gremlins, one of my favorite movies when I was a little kid. So I'm all in on the NECA Gremlins that are coming out right now. So I've been picking all those up. I also got a few autographed album covers. These were here last year, but Cheap Trick, one of my favorite bands ever. I got some autographed stuff from them. Also got an autographed Willie Nelson album. Not very heavy metal, but still Willie Nelson, kind of cool. And then down below, uh, a motorhead mask and a couple of pop vinyls the large oversized ones of deadpool got those really cheap on clearance as you guys know i'm not a huge pop vinyl guy so then next up here we got uh, the x mansion that was on my channel that i built it was a kid's x mansion or a kid's mansion toy mansion and i painted it put some uh, leaves on it and stuff like that i'm probably going to use that for my toy biz figures the early 90s toy biz x-men uh, I'm going to work on that display for 2022, hopefully. But a really cool display piece with King Kong up there at the top. I got Alpha Flight from the Marvel Legends and Wendigo with a couple of trees that were on sale at the holidays from, from Walmart. A couple of Marvel Selects down here in the Calyx bookshelves. As you guys remember, this was all Calyx in this room last year. This year I decided to go to Billy's. But I got Marvel Select Magneto, Savage Hulk. And then I got some floating displays is what I call these with the Power Rangers and Ghostbusters. Um, these might go downstairs, they might go anywhere. Whenever I need room, these are the ones I can adjust. So they're kind of floating displays is what I call them. Then you get up, I got three autographed Judas Priest albums. Judas Priest, one of my favorite bands of all time. Godfathers of heavy metal. Absolutely love Judas Priest. So I got three different albums autographed by them. And now you get to uh, the Iron Man uh, Hall of Armor, Toy Biz, uh, not Toy Biz, but uh, Disney Toy Box uh, exclusive. I think there's three or four sets there that I picked up, but we get so many Iron Man figures. I think it looks really cool. It'll be filled up in no time with the away Marvel Legends releases Iron Man figures. And you know, we get many every single year. You got the Marvel Select Hulk Buster with a big figure there at the front. Really cool figure that just came out. And then you get over into this, and I've done separate videos on this. We've talked about this on the channel before. This would be Billy Bookshelves, that backdrop guy, and I worked together to design individual inserts for every single shelf. I thought that was a really cool way. I wanted to take my display to the next level, and that's exactly what I did uh, on these displays. So very cool. I got like a cosmic scene. Got all different kinds of scenes, and I wanted to have somewhat generic scenes. 
And let me turn the lights on is another really cool feature. I got lights for every single one. And those are the Ikea Norfly lights, all hardwired in. Just a really cool option. I think that really takes the shelves to the next level. And it also gives a little extra light to the office. But tons of cool stuff. I got MCU figures, Marvel Legends, you name it. The top ones are two of my favorite is the X-Mansions. As we know, there's a million X-Men figures that are released every year. Uh, I got two different X-Mansions I put together. Went to Hobby Lobby, got some staircases. Worked with my grandpa who uh, does a lot of woodworking. He helped me out and put those bad boys together. You got some a prison. You got all kinds of street scenes. All different kind of stuff. And like I said, I wanted generic backgrounds for the most part. I didn't want to be locked into figures. So I can constantly move and update these shelves. And I said to myself, do it right the first time or don't do it right. Do it at all. And that's kind of the my motto on this stuff. And it was not cheap to do. But if you do it three or four times, it, it would cost just as much. So do it right the first time was my motto. So I really like how these all came out. Uh, the top there is uh, just some overflow. Uh, my plan is to buy the Billy Bookcase inserts that go on the top, the extenders. Uh, they're pretty expensive, I, but I really want to get those and I'll get backdrops made for the four shelves eventually. But uh, as of right now, just some extra X-Men characters, Marvel Select, some things that didn't fit in on the shelves or at least don't fit in there yet. Some overflow. Then we turn our attention to the built-in bookshelves. These are the built-ins that came with the house, part of the office. Uh, and then uh, you also got the Marvel Legends here. I got them on a, it's a shelf. I got this off of Amazon. It's just a regular shelf, but it looks like a good fire escape for figures. So I bought that, got the background made via that backdrop guy as well. Then you go up top, that top shelf. Uh, it's a floating display, but it looks like kind of a stage. And that's where I put my motorhead statues um, up there. You got a little overflow, still working on that shelf. Then you got Deadpool's apartment. I thought that was a cool shelf. There's a lot of zany Deadpool characters. Then you got the Hellfire Cub, Daily Bugle. And then the bottom one there is pretty much all MCU Avengers type figures, Guardians of the Galaxy and so forth. Then we got a little Avengers battle down there below. Then I got a little docking diorama with the Thunderbolts, Hulk thing. Then an Avengers battle with a ton of different Avengers figures. And then the very top up, very underrated, the Marvel 12-inch uh, Marvel Legends figures. I like those a lot. I think they're a very underrated line. And the very top, kind of the yin to the yang, uh, the Motorhead, um, this Judas Priest, and uh, Megadeth knucklebone statues. Then I got the Age of Apocalypse. I really like the Age of Apocalypse. Uh, just uh, that, that shelf still in work. I'm going to put some guys in there. Got the Thor related shelf. I did get these lights. These are USB charging lights for these. Really cool. And then kind of a park scene with uh, Fin Fang Foom uh, the th and uh, some of the other guys. And that is primarily the office. I do got some more albums over here. Phil Campbell, uh, Motorhead's guitarist. That's his solo band. I got UFO, uh, Scorpion, Saxon, Jethro Tull. Some really cool autographs out there. I got an article. I was in the uh, paper here one time, collections and hobbies. I've been featured a couple of times for my collection in uh, some articles, so I always thought that was really cool. But that's pretty much it for my office. Uh, really coming together, a lot of work in here this year. Uh, I can't wait to see what 2022 brings. As we all know, there's going to be a lot more Marvel Legends figures, and there's a lot of opportunities for uh, new displays. So stay tuned, and we'll see what comes next. All right, now we've got to the portion of the basement. We did my office, but the majority of my collection, as uh, most of you longtime viewers know, is in my basement. So when you come down the basement steps, the first thing that greets you to the basement is my boy, the Ultimate Warrior. I love the Ultimate Warrior, my favorite of all time. Happy to have him here. And then my second favorite guy, or first favorite, depending on how you're looking at it, old Motorhead, Lemmy Kilmeister himself. Have to have him here. So they greet me to the basement, and then we go from there. Uh, this is new, this whole uh, Calyx shelving unit here. I just put this in, not sure what I'm going to do with this. This was up in my office in my before, but uh, right now I have this as storage of all my weekly purchases until I get there. So you guys can see, I just got the new AEW Series 3 through the door. I got two sets of those and a few other things. Uh, I just recently unboxed this, haven't found a spot for it yet. It's the Steel Kaiju. It would be a G.I. Joe third party, a robot vehicle that they never released. Got a brand new 
AT-AT Star Wars. I've been wanting this forever. I finally picked one of those up. Still have to put that somewhere. Uh, then you got the Star Wars Millennium Falcon. I just got that through as well. So I got to open that up and get down to that. Then you got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, 1-Up Arcade Machine. Really cool from a couple years ago. Really awesome. Can't wait for the X-Men one. I'll have both of those down here eventually. And then you got Leonardo. Our old buddy Leonardo. I got this on a screaming deal. A uh, lady bought it just for a birthday party and that was it. And uh, I bought it from her. Little Lemmy poster there. My plan is this whole area over in this corner around the game and stuff. I'll probably put shelving up, something along them lines. Uh, I'm not quite done with there. I might extend the detolfs down there eventually too. So I got some room in this corner to do some stuff still. So that's my plan in this corner. Then you get over to some new detolfs. I've uh, decided to go with Ninja Turtle themed detolfs. Uh, I've got uh, the turtles from the cartoon. And then I got the turtles from the movie. That's all I collect. I don't do the Mirage stuff. Um, but I got these set up. There's obviously a ton of room to grow these Detolfs. There's a lot of room in here. Uh, but we know the turtles are coming out at a rapid fire sp uh, pace with a new set about every single uh, month, really, if not more than. Got a little Flint statue G.I. Joe up there. And then I got a little Micro Brawlers 4-pack that's autographed. Uh, the Major Pod crew. It's kind of just sitting there for now. And then now, yeah, there's the movie Ninja Turtles. I have them set up in my Detolf. Brand new Toka and Rizar and Super Shredder. There you go. Down below, those are the uh, WWE Ninja Turtle crossover figures. Both sets, Series 1 and Series 2. Got both of those. Then I got a few things I haven't even got around to unboxing yet. So I got plans to unbox the AEW rings, Masters of the Universe ring, and uh, War Games. Lemmy poster. And then I got the old school Ultimate Warrior side. Eh, it's not sideshow. It was on WWE.com uh, statue. And a little autographed motorhead back there. But yeah, some of these rings I'll get to. I got to figure out how I'm going to do that. So that's the plan soon. Now, something I've been working on. You guys have been watching the channel. I've been working on this collection for the last year pretty hard. And I'm almost done. Just a handful left to get. But as you can see here, I've been working on my jacks. This is the Jax Deluxe Aggression Collection. But up top first, I guess, would be the entrance grates up there from Mattel. I got the whole line up there. And then they work into the WrestleMania ring cart figures. And then I thought I needed Jax Ruthless Aggression Series 1 Mint on Card. I figured that would go well with my collection. So that's that first series that Jax did. Oh gosh, it's been a long time now. But I, I figured it was time to get those. But then you dive into it. So then these are all loose Jack's Ruthless Aggression figures. Like I said, I'm only missing a handful. Um, Billy bookcases are what I have these in. And uh, yeah, I got a few classic superstars ones mixed in throughout. But you got about 50 to 60 figures on every single shelf. So there's a lot of figures here. If you guys are familiar with Jack's Ruthless Aggression, you know they made about everybody and anything that was possible. Um, so there's that shelf's all Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, and this shelf is all Rey Mysterio. I think they made more Rey Mysterios than anybody else during the Ruthless Aggression time frame. Just absolutely insane how many Ruthless Aggression Rey Mysterios there are. Then getting down to the Hardy Boys shelf and Chris Benoit. They made a lot of Benoits. And then you get down, I got Finley, Bradshaw, Test. The females are extremely hard to stand up, so you have to put them in the back so they can lean against the wall because they all have high heels. Then you get down to Chris Jericho, Kurt Angle shelf. And then a little bit of everybody down below. Jamie Noble, MVP, Boogie Man, Jack Swagger, Kali, a little miscellaneous. Then more of a tag team-centric shelf up top here. All the tag teams of the Ruthless Aggression Age. I really like this cherry figure uh, from the Treacherous Trio 3-pack. That's really neat. The only time they ever made roller skates. Then you got more tag teams there. The Dudleys, the really rare Spike Dudley figures there. Then you get down to the Rosie and the Hurricane and Booker T shelf. That's primarily who we got in there. Then down to the Scott Steiner, Edge, and Christian shelves. With a few miscellaneous in there. And then uh, Eddie Guerrero, CM Punk, Mark Henry, a few other miscellaneouses. And then pretty much John Cena, Umaga down below. Once again, John Cena is another one they made a ton of figures of. And then you're getting down to the 
brand new Ultimate Editions from Mattel. I got a loose and mint on card set of every single one of those so far. Uh, a couple of Warriors. And then one of the new centerpieces of my collection, the Sideshow Collectibles Ultimate Warrior. Very, very cool statue. I'm not a huge statue guy, but anytime there's an Ultimate Warrior statue, it's tough for me to pass something like that up. Uh, there's some Deluxe Aggressions. Uh, those are primarily on the top shelf, the Classic Superstars Deluxe Aggressions. Slowly working on building those. Uh, getting down into more Deluxe Aggressions. A lot of TNA ones. Uh, TNA, as a lot of people know, made the Deluxe Aggressions after Jax uh, left the WWE. And Deluxe Aggressions there. I'm pretty close to a complete set on those. Uh, maybe 10 more to go, something like that. And then the bottom two shelves are the Mutants, Monsters, Zombie line from Mattel. And the very bottom is the Jax Stomp series. Uh, series 1, 2, and 3. So that is the Jax Ruthless Aggression Room. All right, we've transitioned from my Jax Ruthless Aggression Room into the main living room where the majority of my wrestling collection is. This is where all the Detolfs are. But we'll start here to the side. This is a built-in bookshelf I have in my basement. Uh, I got the Horseman pack, but the cool thing about that Horseman pack is I got it autographed by all four members of the Horseman. So that is, as most collectors know and most wrestling fans know, a pretty cool deal. I got the Great Khali Big Show Jax Ruthless Aggression exclusives. Pretty hard to find at this point. Uh, I got some little major pod shelf, I guess you'd call it. I got Brian Myers and uh, Zack Ryder. And then the Edge pack, all autographed. So I think that's pretty cool to have there. And then uh, some of my favorites are the boxed Jax Ruthless Aggression sets. A lot of time spent trying to track these down, pick these up. Uh, some of them are really forgotten um, and worth a, a lot of money at this point. Really hard to get. Uh, that Rey Mysterio, for example, is an Australian exclusive, only available in Australia. Um, so just a lot of cool things there. Then you got uh, Don Marie, Christy Hemi, both autographed. They're only figures they ever got. John Cena, Australian exclusive. And then a couple of Hasbros that worked my way into the collection. I don't know. I keep thinking maybe I'll go all in on the Hasbro Min on card one day. Maybe I won't. I don't know. I got to decide that. And then some uh, older exclusives from Toy Fair and Toy Magazine and stuff like that. Then you get into the retro. Everybody loves retros. Uh, the great gift to the Hasbros, the, the future. Hopefully they come back one day. We'll see. But I got the entire retro collection all here with both Macho Mans. And that's uh, the retros. So we'll see. I got room for two more down there. So if we can find two more retros, I got space. But I know the retros got a lot of people back into collecting a few years back. Hopefully they come back one of these days soon. All right, now we get into the Detolfs. So first off, I got a Detolf here. More of a Attitude Era, kind of end of Attitude Era time frame, I guess you would say, with Rikishi and Hurricane and Christian. Uh, moving on down, you got Cactus Jack, Mankind, Dude Love, The Nation of Domination. You got May and Moolah back there. And you get down to Bray Wyatt shelf. So I got room to grow. I have extra room in a lot of these cases for uh, expansions. We know we're going to get a lot more Bray Wyatts in the future. And I just stuck uh, Bobby Heenan down there as a little floating surprise. An autographed LJN uh, Bobby Heenan. So a really cool piece to have in my collection. Then you move up. You got Shawn Michaels. It's all Shawn Michael elites. I think I got one sit up there. But uh, that's all Shawn Michaels in there. And then the next one down, that turns into all Bret Hart, Hart Foundation related figures. So that's very cool. Then you got all your Stone Cold Elites. And then down to, uh, you know, Suited Guys, Vince McMahon, Big Boss Man, some of that kind of stuff from the Attitude Era. I am 100% complete on my Mattel Elites. I have every one ever made at this point. There's a nice DX shelf, down to a Triple H shelf, all of his various Elites. Kurt Angle, Diesel, Razor, 123 Kid, then down to a legend shelf with a bunch of different legends. Some Jax figures mixed in there as well that have not had elites yet. Then a really cool shelf. You got Kane. You got uh, all the various Kane elites. Every single Kane elite that's ever been made so far, all in there. Then down to one of my personal favorite shelves. As a lot of people know, I love the Ultimate Warrior. There's that brand new Legends Ultimate Warrior. I got the WWE 2K. Um, Prototype Ultimate Warrior as well, which is a really cool piece. Got all the Jax Warriors in there. WWE Shop statue. 
A lot of cool warrior stuff. Then down to another personal favorite, my NWA shelf with the Horsemen, the Road Warriors, Magnum, Kevin Sullivan, Terry Funk. And then a little bit of an extension of that. Some of the Super 7s, you got the Storm Collectibles figures, uh, Super 7 figures. Some Jacks, you got the Freebirds, Andy Kaufman, Dr. Death. Uh, that's another favorite shelf of mine. Then you get into the Undertaker. You know Undertaker, he's had a ton of elites. Very dark shelf, as you can imagine, with Undertaker always wearing black. It's a very dark shelf. And then another awesome shelf, Ultimate Warrior, Elites, Basics, you name it. It's all in there, every warrior. Then down to more of a WCW era shelf, Storm Hogan, some of the uh, NWO members. And then down to a WCW shelf with a lot of different WCW guys down there. Up top, another Undertaker shelf. There's so many, you had Overflow. Second shelf of Undertaker. Down to another favorite of mine as a kid, the old Stinger, a Sting shelf with all the Sting elites that have come out and basics that have come out so far. Then into an NWO, WCW shelf, a few different ones in there. And then a new generation shelf, I guess we'd call that for the most part, down at the bottom. Another favorite by a lot of people, Macho Man Randy Savage shelf. Tons of Randy Savage figures. And uh, a lot of Hulk Hogan's down there, Zeus, a lot of the favorites of the 80s. Another 80s shelf, uh, early 90s, you got Ric Flair, Rick Rude, Monsoon and Heenan, The Hammer, The Sheik. And uh, continues on down with Sergeant Slaughter, Hacksaw, Crush, Mr. Perfect, Dusty Rhodes. Back to another Macho Man shelf. I got to think we're going to get more Macho Mans, and I got room to grow right there with some more Macho Man figures. And then we got Hulk Hogan, Terry Funk, Jake the Snake, more 80s, and it keeps going down as we uh, get to um, the Brain Busters, Bobby Heenan, Warlord, Rick Rude, Andre the Giant, a lot of those guys, Killer Bees back there. Got Brother Love, got the new British Bulldog, Rick Martell, Virgil, Teddy Biasi, Hillbilly Jim. And a little continuation, got that new Mr. T, uh, Roddy Piper 2-pack, Billy Graham, Don Morocco, Roddy Piper, Bam Bam Bigelow's, Ricky Steamboat. Some good classics in there. And we move on to the tag team sets, Bushwhackers, all the great tag teams of uh, the 80s, early 90s. And I got room to grow. This is kind of a transition shelf, got all the Ghostbuster figures in there. And then I got two down below that I just haven't brought myself to open yet. One of these days I will open them. I got Eddie Guerrero and Macho King Randy Savage. Some expensive figures. I just can't pull the trigger on them quite yet. Next Detolf got Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman. Got a little room to grow in there as well. Down to Edge and Christian Shelf. A lot of edges as of late. Seems like they keep coming. And then you got the Finn Balor and the Demon Shelf. A lot of figures from him as well over the years. And then you're down to the first row of female figures. You got Paige, you got the new China figure, Sonya Deville, Ruby Riot, Io Shirai, all of them down there. Booker T and Batista, a little boogeyman thrown in. I like those two Batista figures up front. I think they're awesome. You got a rock shelf, like The Undertaker, a lot of rock figures over the years. Got a lot of rocks in there, every single one. Same with the Hardy Boys, another uh, team that have had many elites over the years. And then down to another female shelf with Beth Phoenix, Becky Lynch, Kelly Kelly, uh, tons of them, Asuka, Stephanie McMahon. Seth Rollins, one of the favorites of the elite line these days. Tons of different Seth Rollins, every single one so far. Then you get down to uh, Dean Ambrose and uh, AJ Styles shelf. And then you get some uh, guys that are one-off characters, some Kozlov, some William Regals, uh, Tenzai, Damian Sandow, some of the miscellaneous guys we've had over the years. Then you get down to uh, the Charlotte Flairs, Dana Brooks, Carmella's, the Bellas, Alicia Fox, et cetera. And then Roman Reigns, just like Seth Rollins, we get a ton of Roman Reigns, and I'm sure we're going to get a lot more soon, but there's all the Romans. Rey Mysterio, same type of thing. A lot of different Rey Mysterios over the years. There's all of them, and a few Sin Caras up there as well. Then you got Eddie Guerrero and my stunt double, The Big Show, JBL, a few other ones. And then another female shelf with Nia Jax, Ronda Rousey, a um, bunch of different people, Alexa Bliss. Daniel Bryan, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens set. A lot of different ones, as you would imagine, on those guys as well. Then we get down to some Ric Flair, Evolution, Hornswoggle, Finley, RVD, and then tons of Randy Orton. And you get down to Sheamus, Alberto Del Rio, Umagas, Wade Barretts. And then you get your Chris Jericho's, Cody Rhodes, Goldust, Rybacks. 
And then uh, another favorite shelf of mine, CM Punk. A lot of CM Punk's up there. A lot of all of his elites, a lot of basics, a lot of third-party shirts to really set those to the next level. Then you got the ECW guys with Terry Funk, my favorite of all time up front. You got Rhino and uh, the Bludgeon Brothers and a lot of other good ones in there. Then you get down to the Dolph Ziggler and Miz shelf. A lot of figures from them over the years. Then you got Shinsuke and Elias, Shelton Benjamin, Bobby Roode. Moving on to a lot of the suited characters we've had over the years, some of the build of figures, the announcers, stuff like that, and a little bit of a CM Punk overflow. Then you get into some tag teams, uh, the Fashion Police, uh, Seamus Cesaro, the Revival. And then you get to Bill Goldberg, Los Matadors, the Usos, the Wyatt family in the back there. Then uh, you got Nexus, and you got Jinder Mahal, some of the other guys, and another Matt Hardy. Hornswoggle. And then John Cena. Just like uh, Jax, Mattel has made a ton of John Cena figures. So you got a whole John Cena detolf. And then you got new tag teams with uh, some of the new ones the Viking Raiders, the Street Profits, Paul Ellering, who I love. Some of the older tag teams, Legacy, APA, some of those guys. And then you got primarily a New Day shelf down there below. Follow it up with Braun Strowman, R-Truth, and then my John Cena Overflow. And down to a primarily NXT-centric shelf. A lot of NXT champions over the years. Then I've got my AEW shelf. You saw I had Series 3 ready to go. I'm sticking these here right now until uh, they get enough figures for their own Detolf, which should be soon. And then you got John Morrison throughout the years. Some Kofi Kingston, Bobby Lashley. And you got uh, the Hawkins and Ryder shelf uh, of their different basics and elites over the years. Super 7 ones to come. And then back to some more NXT guys. You got the Undisputed Era, Walter, Velveteen Dream, Pete Dunne. And some more current guys, Drew McIntyre, Ricochet, Aleister Black. And then the final one was some of the Cruiserweight guys over the years. And now we get into the defining moments. I have a complete loose and min on card, min on box, whatever you want to call it, defining moments set. There's the Slim Jim Macho Man. Some really cool uh, bobbleheads. You got that Slim Jim gas station container on Macho. And then you got uh, bobbleheads of heavy metal guys. Obviously, there's the Anthrax Max Scott. You got Rush, Zach Wild, the Misfits. You got Iron Maiden here. You got uh, just an Ultimate Warrior figure I had extra and an autograph Ringside Collectibles exclusive shoot interview from way back in the day. You got Robin Zander Cheap Trick bobbleheads. Then a few pop uh, vinyls, Funko Pops up there. You got Motorhead, Metallica, Ramones, ACDC. And then uh, you got Mr. T exclusive San Diego Comic Con, Iron Maiden statue. Then you got another couple of uh, defining moments with John Cena and The Rock. And then those go over to Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Shawn Michaels. And then you get uh, three more Detolfs I have here. So I've been working real hard. I'm only missing, I think, two of the WCW OSFTM figures. I uh, got uh, those up there. And then those go into my LJN figures. As you guys know, that was a big uh, collection grab this summer. I worked really hard to complete an LJN collection, and I did it. I think it only took me a, a few weeks. Maybe it was a month. I can't remember. But I had a good video on that if you want to check that out. I uh, do got the Corporal Kirschner, Kirschner uh, three-pack there. Bearded, stubble, and clean-shaven. And then the bottom, I put the ECW OSFTM figures. I also have the uh, No Noose New Jack, as you can see. The famed No Noose New Jack. Then you get back to more WCW OSFTM. I uh, got all the Ric Flair variants. That's one of the ones I'm missing is the baby blue Ric Flair. Getting down into some LJNs, included the Sergeant Slaughter. I actually won on a, in a raffle on my birthday, if you can believe that. Just amazing. What were the odds? More, uh, some of my, this is probably my favorite shelf, this Ultimate Warrior. Is, if somebody says, what's a wrestling figure to you? What's your favorite figure ever? That's probably that Warrior. Meant a lot to me when I was nine years old. And then the rest of the ECW OSFTMs down on the bottom. And then there's a mix of WCW OSFTMs and the Jax Classic Superstars uh, figures of uh, the, their LJN-inspired ones. And then you get down to some more LJNs. And more LJNs. A bunch of different Jesse Venturas in there with different hair colors. And then you got the two talking Hasbro 
Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan. We lean over here to the side against the wall. Uh, kind of a just a set right now. I'm not sure where I'm going to keep these forever, but Unmatched Fury, if you guys remember these from Jax back in the day. Uh, very cool sets there. Hogan Warrior, um, a lot of good ones. Um, just kind of a catch-all for some extra stuff is what I got over there. So then we get into the Hasbros. Now I use these baseball bat cases, these Hobby Lobby Michaels. You can get them wherever. I got the complete Hasbro run. I am just missing Undertaker mail away. I don't know if I'll ever come across that or not. Hopefully one of these days I do. Um, but that's the only one I'm missing. We got a lot of uh, Hasbros. Like a lot of people of my age, those were a, a big, big deal um, back in the day. A lot of Christmases and birthday presents with those uh, throughout the years. And then uh, I've also put the retro figures in there. Uh, the retros are in cases as well. So I got all the retros. I got them loose and on card, as you guys saw the on card ones earlier. And then I do got some of the Simba bootlegs, which I think are really cool. I wish I had those as a kid. I think those are really awesome. Um, and then the very bottom, you got the Galoob WCW line. I got a couple of the UK ones. I need to work on uh, getting the rest, hopefully one of these days. Uh, playing the long game, the famous long game on those. So I'll get those one of those days. And then you got the brand, uh, the Hasbro small figures. Um, they came with that little ring, so I have those. And then uh, I got some of the micro brawlers. I'm not a massive micro brawler guy, but there's a few characters I like that I will buy, like the Terry Funk, Ultimate Warrior. Basically guys with face paint. And then you get back up into more Hasbros. Everybody's favorite. Then you get some of the green carded Hasbros. Everybody knows those are pretty rare. I got a custom Tuxter Hulk Hogan. Very cool. Custom Greg Valentine. It's not a legit Greg Valentine, but a custom one. And you got the Macho King. Got both versions of that one. It's basically the Macho Hogan Warrior. The big three at the time right there on that whole case. And then you get into more of the tag teams. You got Demolition, LOD, the Steiners, the Nasties, and the Natural Disasters. And then up top, you got the Bushwhackers, a couple of Rick Rudes, the Head Shrinkers, Bam Bam, Money Inc., Twin Towers, and the Rockers. Which then uh, leads us over to a wall here. This is a more defining moment. So I got the Undertaker, San Diego Comic-Con Undertaker exclusive. Uh, Ultimate Warrior defining moments, Flair, both versions of Flair defining moments. And you got Sting, Hogan Warrior. You got all those there. And then at the very bottom, the, the famed flashback series two from, from Walmart, Ricky Steamboat, Jake the Snake. Uh, of course, Harley Race and Stone Cold Steve Austin. So a pretty game changer set. And then on the top of the Detolfs, the nice thing is they got a little bit of storage up there. So I got the Sting WCW Toy Biz set. I got the Major Pod, uh, the three sets from the Major Pod. Got a Terry Funk signed Elite. Love Terry Funk. My Probably my second favorite wrestler of all time. So I'm glad I have that. Got a Dustin and Cody Blood and Guts 2-pack. Got a little uh, title belt there. And then you got the Retro Fest line. Retro Fest line was a really cool line. Wish it would have continued. Then we're getting into more of the Jax Ruthless Aggression box sets. A lot of rare box sets here. Some really high dollar stuff that you just don't see come along very often. Uh, the Maria and Beth Phoenix. Then you got the Ashley and Molina, which is insanely priced these days. And the Hardys is an expensive one. Hardy and Umaga. You got Hardy and Bret Hart. Then you got the single carded ones. You got Dusty Rhodes, Hulk Hogan, Sean and Hogan, the Hardy Boys. Then you got uh, the Hulk Hogan belt pack and the Ted DiBiase belt pack. All right, I don't always have these wrestling buddies out, but I thought I'd bring them out. My kids like to play with them, but I did get a brand new couch, if you remember my last year's video. So I got a new couch this year. Got all the wrestling buddies on there. The only one I'm missing, Jake the Snake Roberts from the old school set. I played the long game and I lost because Jake's through the roof now. One of these days, I got to pick up that Jake the Snake Roberts. So hopefully soon. Got the G.I. Joe aircraft carrier. It's a, that is scale. That is how big the box was on the G.I. Joe aircraft carrier back in the day. I don't have it on display, but I thought it'd be really cool to uh, have a piece of it. One of these days, I will display my aircraft carrier. So that concludes my big room, my big Mattel Detolf room. A lot of stuff going on in here. Um, that's it. 
All right, so next up in the Grand Tour is something you guys probably saw last year if you watched last year's video. If you didn't watch it, well, go back and check that after you're done with this one. But something really cool and something I always wanted as a kid. I said, someday when I get my own house, I'm going to make a secret door. So this looks like a great bookshelf and everything. But when I designed this whole basement, we built this basement. We built this as a secret door. So follow me into probably my favorite room in the whole house. As we step into my Jax Classic Superstars Collector's Room slash gym. So as you guys know, we do a weekly Jax Classic Superstars video every single week. We got Jax for days. We got the whole collection, every single one in here. We'll do a separate video as part of the Jax Classic Superstars series. We'll go through this room one-on-one. -on -one. But they are all in here. Tons and tons of figures. A lot of years of collecting on these. And I know a lot of people say, how did you get all these? They're so expensive. Well, I bought all of these off the shelf or via ringside collectibles as they came out back in the day. So, I mean, I spent 10 to $14 maybe on each one of these. You know, and now some of these, a lot of these are over $100 now. So it is a massive, massive... Uh, collection massive set but they look so good together the uniform packaging just really makes it pop as you can see we won't take you through every single one line by line but you get a you can get a grasp of what the room is they got all the singles the deluxe the ljn version the two packs the three packs you name it they're all here Every single one. I'm just basically missing some of the one of 100s. And I've started collecting those. And you get into the corner. And then you get into a bit of uh, some other figures I have been on card. Some of the Legends of the Rings, which replaced the classic set for a couple of series. You got a couple of TNA Impact Hogan's. A couple of Ruthless Aggression exclusives. Got the Mattel first ring from the Race Skull Mania ring. And then you get into all the uh, different elite Ultimate Warrior figures men on box. You guys know me. I got to have a two or three or four on all my Warriors. So just kind of a little Warrior wall. Got uh, Mattel Basic Series 100. We'll do a video on that one day. I think I got a lot to say about that set. Uh, it's a really interesting set. It's a milestone set being 100. But there's a lot of craziness to that set that I don't think a lot of people have talked about. So we'll get there one day. Got the complete ECW OSFTM collection. Got all those. The only thing I'm missing is the ring. Uh, I do have the no new, new jack, like I said, but I'm missing the ring is what I need. I need a mint in box ring. I'm just not going to spend $800,000. I got to get one that's a, a reasonable price to me at least. So there you go. There's some uh, ECW. And then you got uh, some of the uh, Bone Crunchers, Series uh, 1 and 2, I believe. I loved it when these came out. It was a big surprise to me in the day. It was back. You didn't know these things were coming out. You just showed up at Toys R Us one day, and bam, there it is. Very, very cool to have those. Very similar to that Jax Ruthless Series 1. Got the ECW accessory packs, which are pretty rare as well. Got the really rare Treacherous Trio Edgeheads 3 pack, which is really cool. But then even rarer, we got the 1 of 100 Roddy Piper Deluxe Classic. Very rare. And then probably my, one of my favorite, if not my favorite figure of all time, the Jax 1 of 100, Terry Funk. Uh, as you guys know, I love Terry Funk, so I uh, have to have that. And another really cool one, the Roddy Piper 1 of 100, the boxing match. Mattel just recently made one. There was that Superstar Billy Graham that was only sold at a Chicago Toys R Us for WrestleMania. And then you got the Giant Gonzalez Rare Real Fur Edition giant gonzalez and you got a couple of ray mysterio exclusives from jacks and then you got the rvd belt one of five thousand i believe and then a 101 100 ray mysterio jacks classic superstar and then the figure that a lot of people say started the classic superstar is not traditionally packaged like one but it's a uh, rick flair it was an internet exclusive and then something really cool is a uh, is a handwritten note from jeremy padauer about that terry funk one of 100 I think that is really cool. I did send that to Jeremy. I said, hey, is this 100% legit? Just wanted to check. And he said it was a million percent legit. He remembered doing it. And then I uh, recently picked up two Canadian exclusive Hulk Hogan figures that were only sold in Canada. 
So there you go. So as you can see, this is a big, big room here. There's a lot going on. I use this as my gym. Um, it's in here a lot, but very cool. A lot of stuff in here. Jack's Class Superstars is the best. All right, the final piece of the collection, the final room of my collection is my furnace room, I guess you would call it. There's gonna be a lot of changes in here in 2022, but this is how it's set up right now. Next year's display tour gonna be totally different in here. You're gonna see a whole new world. But uh, let's walk in, follow me. So we got uh, all kinds of stuff here. This is a G.I. Joe City. Basically all the G.I. Joe figure subscription club. I got the whole set of those. And then also the 25th anniversary single releases. A lot of those were at Target's, Toys R Us's, Walmart's for the 25th anniversary. Uh, talk about a throwback to a kid from the 80s seeing these on the shelf back in the day. Tons and tons of Joes. Joes is my first love, as most know. And I got some Toy Biz. Uh, eventually I might use those with my new X Mansion there. Work my way through. And I got the Walking Dead figures. Uh, I might get rid of these, I'm not sure. I love The Walking Dead, I was big into it, but you know, it's kind of faded through the years as time went on. It might be time to unleash them and sell that set. But we'll see. And then of course the G.I. Joe two packs, single packs. One of these days we'll do, uh, very similar to the Jack's Classic Superstars, we'll do a G.I. Joe series probably. I'd love to do the figure subscription club figures one-on-one -on -one, talking about each one the excitement of the line and stuff like that and if you close the door here so got a few things going on here we got the bone crunchers almost complete bone cruncher set not quite complete but boy it's dangerously close i mean it's probably 98 99 complete i got these in order of release this is the end one but we'll work around to the beginning we got them. And then this is kind of, uh, we got more G.I. Joes here, of course. Uh, but then this was my daughter's and really liked playing with wrestling figures until just about recently, unfortunately. Now they're not really into it, but we had the arena set up, stuff like that. They would play through here. This might all come down. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with all this kind of stuff in the future. Um, you got more bone crunchers here. Smackdown ring up above. And you got a couple of the Jack's BCA box sets, a few Titan Tron figures. I forgot I had these. I found these in a box. Uh, probably going to get rid of those. Not a huge Titan Tron guy. As I said, those got me out of wrestling, unfortunately. Uh, Hulk rules packs and bone cruncher packs, a few rings down there. And you work over to the end here, uh, very top shelf up there. I've just, for now, until I switch to my new room I'm working on, there's uh, some AEW Series 1, Series 2, and then you get into Jack's Legends of the Ring when they were with TNA. Uh, that's the set that replaced Classic Superstars. Then we got the Ruthless Aggression Era TNA, a very rare set. There's the first series, and I only did one series like that. I believe they were Walgreens exclusives. I got those. And then I got some of the Legend UFC figures from uh, back in the day by Jax. I only like the Legends. Boss Rutten being my favorite of all time. So very cool there. And then you get down to these Billy Book cases. There's two rings. There's the uh, Masters of the Universe regular ring. There's the Snake Mountain ring. I got two of those. Still have to open one. Then I got a Mint on Card unpunched on all of my Masters of the WWE Universe. I've got unpunched cards for every single one, and then I do have a loose set as well. So you can see those all the way down through there. Uh, then I got a couple of ring giants, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Roddy Piper, Ted DiBiase from the Classic Superstar set, a little bit of the bubbly, a Vince McMahon autographed album, which I thought was pretty cool. Then you go over here. There's Thundercats Series 1 by Super 7, anxiously awaiting Series 2, 3, and 4, hopefully soon. Uh, then uh, same as the WWE Masters of the Universe, the regular Masters of the Universe. I got the entire set so far, unpunched, and then uh, loose as well. Just missing Scaregull from everything that's been released so far. But I got all those. 
And then some uh, Maximum Aggression Jax figures on the very bottom shelf. Kind of a forgotten line. Uh, sometimes I think about completing that line. Maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see. Then getting to G.I. Joe, the G.I. Joe Classified series. Stole my heart in 2020. Absolutely love it. I got a G.I. Joe statue. Got the Baroness. Um, got a little uh, diorama piece there that I put together. I got a video on that on the channel. Got Cobra Commander on his throne with some red ninjas. Uh, then you got all the Joes down here on a shelf. And then I have every single G.I. Joe so far they've released. Mint on card, mint in box. So I'm really happy there. And then I got some Transformers. Transformers and me have a really weird collecting relationship. Uh, I'm all in sometimes, and sometimes I'm all out. Uh, I just hate that they make the same people over and over and better and better. I get it, but I hate it at the same time. So I think I'm done for the most part with my Transformers collecting. Uh, Star Wars, kind of been a hodgepodge. You guys know, all in on Star Wars. This room will eventually be 100% Star Wars is my plan in 2022. But I got a lot of the Star Wars Black Series 6 inch here displayed right now from all the various movies, the Clone Wars, everything else in between. Then you got uh, more Transformers there and uh, some of the larger Transformers and, uh, you know, the Devastators of the World and stuff like that. And then you got more Star Wars, Jabba the Hutt, the Rancor Monster, probably my favorite all time monster. Some more six inch. Got the brand new Jar Jar Binks. Just opened him the other day. And then you got a lot of the uh, Clone Wars stuff, some of the solo movie stuff, and stuff like that on the top shelf. And then you got one more set over here to the side of Jack's Bone Crunchers. Oh, I also forgot. I got the Mandalorian and uh, up there. I forgot about those. Some figure arts. And then you got the Bone Crunchers. So we got three shelves of Bone Crunchers. Like I said, about every single one. Just missing a few here and there. So there you have it. That's the quick tour of the furnace room. All right, guys, that's the tour. I hope it was worth the wait for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some ideas for your own collection. But if anything else comes up, feel free. Leave me a question in the comments. Check out my companion piece video that I'll release here in the next couple of days. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. A lot of new viewers, I'm sure, watching my channel for the first time with this collector's tour. So make sure you subscribe. A lot to come on the channel. A lot on the channel every single day. So there you have it. So I'm Kyle. I'm going to be rocking and rolling, strutting and strolling on out of here. I'll see you guys all real soon.